Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, uh, good morning friends, uh, we are back on the lecture 2 on uh, decoding comic studies and graphic narratives in India 21st century. So, in the last class what we try to discuss what comics is, we look at the definition of a comics, also the problem that definition poses before us, we also looked at that how different countries received what comic is and how it developed further. In lecture 2, we are going to talk about two di difficult different seminal book, those are comic and sequential art and understanding comics. So, one is by William, William Asner and the second one is by MacLeod, which we uh, talked in the last class. So, today what we are going to do is to see what are the important features of these books and what are they have to say importantly and significantly about the comic studies or comic arts. Why I am going to discuss these two books is one reason that they are seminal, they are very important. In fact, every student or professor or anyone who is developing his or her interest in comic studies they have to go through these two books and it is my humble suggestions to all of you that if you are entering into this field, please get hold of this book and read. You will see that it will definitely develop your concepts, your ideas in relation to comic studies. So, William Asner in his book called Comics and Sequential Art, he is talking about language of comics he is talking about the panel, he is talking about the timing, he is talking about lettering, he is talking about layout, he is also talking about color and most importantly in the last chapter he is talking about the creative process. So, you see even if you see the section the way William Esner has divided in his book called Comics and Sequential Art, you could see that it is a very introductory books. And if we read, let us say for example, language of comics, very important again the panel, the timing, lettering, layout, color and the creative process. So, these all chapters are arranged in a such a way that if we read these books, it will give enlightening understanding of the discourse called comics or the field called comic studies. So, what are we going to do? We will look at section by section not in details because I will leave it for you, you go and read at home, but just to see what he has to say and I will explain also the nuances or something which is very much related to the vocabularies or grammars of comic studies. So, let us look at the slide here, what is doing in section 1, Sessner in the section 1, Asner is arguing that the repetition of uh, images in comics creates a language with its own grammar. So, what I am trying to suggest here ki why section 1 is important for us is this that let us say for example, put it this way that every feature, every drama or novel or grammar, everything has its own vocabularies and everything has its own grammar we need to get hold of its language, we need to get hold of its grammar. Esner also discusses the importance of the gutter, which is the space between the panels. Esner concludes the chapter by stating that the language of comics is still evolving and there is much to be explored in terms of its potential. So, section 1, it sets out the foundation for the rest of the book by establishing comic as a unique and complex medium with its own language and Esner's analysis of his own work provides concrete example of how this language can be used to create 
effective storytelling. Before I move to the next slide, what I want from my student is to go deeper and understand what is storytelling. Like what are we doing in literature and humanities? Even if it is a philosophy or even if it is a science, let us say for example, they are telling you in one way or in another some form of a story. The only thing difference is that the form in which they are telling you the story. Let me put it more simple for you. When we go to a science, science is also talking about the planet, geophysics let us say for example, and also philosophy and literature also talks about the planet or its energy. But the difference between these two disciplines is they are very different the way they talk, which means that it is a form that decides how the content going to be. Let me put it another example. Let us say for example, the idea of a truth. Truth is something that is being debated, discussed and dissented in different disciplines, even if it is a science or a mathematics or humanities or social sciences. How it is different? It is different in a way how it is being told to you, which means the form. So, the way we have it is a form, accordingly we are going to decide the content and therefore, form becomes very important. So, a storytelling which means that everyone has to tell a story. Let me put it this way. Suppose for example, we are going to tell a story on Facebook, we are going to tell a story through our status, WhatsApp status, we are going to tell a story through newspaper, we are going to tell a story through images, we are going to tell a story in a print form. If you see, we are in all these different platforms, we are telling a story. Are we going to tell the same thing? The idea is yes, what is the same thing? The story, but the way we tell the story on WhatsApp status, can we tell the story in print as well? The answer is no. So, which means that storytelling has a different format. It depends what platform you choose and also how effective you want to be. I am sure that you have seen the newspaper. You see in the newspaper most of the time when they have to make fun of certain ideas, certain policies, they use the cartoon, which means it is humorous. You can laugh at it and at the same time it conveys you a sense. Therefore, we are not going to misunderstand it that this form of a story is not true. It only means that the way it tells you the story, it is more lighter. It creates a humor, it creates irony, it creates laughter, but at the same time it goes deeper in you and talks about the story and it reaches the masses quite clear to you. So, what I am suggesting here is that we all have a different way to tell the story. So, storytelling is a storytelling is a narrative. How it is going to be more effective that is a question. Every time, every second when we are going to tell a story, it has to be more effective. Let us say for example, Twitter, which means that in a very short span of a time, we are going to say something which reaches to the maximum number of people and also effective. Why Twitter is so popular in today's society? It is only because we are so much busy that we do not have a time to read in thousand words your story or let us say your truth. So, therefore, what we have tell us something quickly in 200 words or 100 words, it can reach to me clear and explicit masses and which is why it is more popular. So, the reason is that storytelling is a narrative. It is a kind of an idea that is produced by different format that which one is more effective. In the same way, William Asner in his book section 1, he talks about that how our storytelling is going to be more effective. So, moving to the second slide. So, here what it does in the section 2 <coughs> of, uh, of the book is devoted to the concept of a panel which he argues is the basic unit of a comics. So, a panel is a one drawing on a page that contains a segment of action. A page may have one or many panels and panels are frequently, but not always surrounded by border or outline whose shape can be altered to indicate emotion, tension or flashback sequences 
the size, shape and style of a panel as well as the placement of figures and speech balloons inside it affect the timing or pacing of a story. Panels are used to break up and encapsulate sequence of events in a narrative. So, what this section 2 is doing with us when we are reading section 2, we are going to have a focus on panels. So, why panel is important and why he is talking about the one important feature called a panel is also because that for Asner or in fact anyone who is writing comics, how you create tension, how you create emotional effect for which the panel becomes very relevant. So, the way because you cannot have a uniform panel, if you want to create monotonous activity, you want to create a romantic activity or you want to create an activity which is speeding it up, it all depends what kind of a panel we are choosing. So, it also very significant in comic studies that what panel we have selected and which is why if you read any comics, let us say Batman, superhero, whatever comics you pick it up, you will see that the panel which I am going to discuss in the next slides, they are not going to be the same. So, moving to the next slide where I will talk about more in details. Here you see, right. So, here you see that there are various forms of panel, right. This is a one panel, right. This is a second panel, this is a third panel, this is a fourth panel, let us say this is a fifth panel, this is a sixth and this is the seventh. I will go slow because uh, this course I have meant to introduce for beginners and also who are going to start this course for UG and PG and the researchers. So, look at this panel on the one page you see there are six panel, seven panels sorry. And interestingly what you notice that the panel 1 is not the same the way panel 2 is. In fact, all the panels are different. Look at the size of the panel, see here this and then this, here then goes this and this right. The size of this panel is not the same here or not the same here, which means that what Asner is saying that every panel right, every panel is going to connote or speak something differently, they are not the same and interestingly you see the zigzag line here, see zigzag here, here you also see zigzag, which means why there is a zigzag line given over here, it is a zigzag line given over here to specify, to mention that there is going to be a different emotions right or different time or let us say different feeling. It depends what kind of a feeling, what kind of emotions, what kind of a time are we going to create. That will define or let us say determine what panel we are choosing right. So, what I am making a request for you is simple that whenever you look at this panel right, it may not be synchronous right, you see this is not synchronous right. And it means that not everything that happens in a story world is depicted in the panel. So, what Esner is arguing that the act of a paneling or boxing the action not only defines its perimeters, but establishes the position of the reader in relation to the sheen and indicates the duration of the event. So, uh, so all these panel if you see they all are asking as a as a reader for us to pay our time and intellect and sense to understand what this uh, panel is all about. Moving to the next slide, here you see what we find that a panel is one drawing on a page that contains a segment of an action. A page may have one or many panels and panels are frequently, but not always surrounded by a border or outline. Let me show you like here you see that there is a there is a border right, there is a border for from where it is surrounded all the panels right. Panels are used to break up and encapsulate, encapsulate sequences of events in a narrative. 
Esner argues that the act of paneling or boxing the axon not only defines its perimeters, but establishes the position of the reader in relation to the scene and indicates the duration of the event. Indeed, it tells time. The gutter is where the reader's imagination come into play as they fill in the gaps between the panels. So, what I mean to say here that when you see that there is a panel and as I have already explained that this area is called gutter right. This area is called gutter. This area is called gutter. So, here your imagination as a reader as a researcher our imagination comes into the play. I will explain more in detail when I move further. So, now I am going to speak about types of a panel which means that it is not that each panels are the same. We have to know as a researcher or as a reader what these panels are called. How are we going to understand these kind of a panel? So, here comes the first slides. So, there are many panels. So, each panel we have to understand what it is called or what is happening. Because if we look at as a cartoon or we look at is just a story is going on then we are not going to understand. So, what are we going to understand that what is the intention of the author? Why is he creating that particular panel? Let me put it more simple for you because uh, if you have read literature let us say for example, when we read Shakespearean story right or Shakespearean drama what happens right. In the Macbeth or let us say the merchant of Venice what is a soliloquy doing? What is a side doing? These are dramatic devices, right? Soliloquy, a side, dramatic monologue, these are literary devices deliberately used by the dramatist or let us say novelist or let us say poet to create a particular effect in audience, right? So, in Shakespeare, if you see that most of the plays was written by him and he is talking about soliloquy. What is the purpose? The purpose, the objective of creating a soliloquy on the theatre is so that audience can know what is going on in the mind of a character, but other characters who are available on the stage or of the stage they must not know because until and unless he does it dramatist what kind of effect he want to create will not be possible. So, how it become, how will he uh, create an effect that there is an idea of a suspense, how audience would know that there is something bad going to happen. He will be able to know only when he knows that there is something going wrong in the mind of a character and when he is talking someone. Let us say for example, if I take the help of a play called a Macbeth. So, what happens in a Macbeth? In a Macbeth, we get to know that Lady Macbeth and Macbeth they both have conspired against the King Duncan and Duncan is going to be killed that is it right. But Duncan does not know he is going to be killed. So, so the reason why there is a soliloquy, why this kind of a technique so that a particular objective can be created. That is why the dialogue is chosen in such a way, that is why the story is chosen in such a way and that is why the entire setting and scene is created in a particular manner. And you know that when there is a ghost appearance on the stage there it cannot happen in a very uh, natural setting. It has to be created a kind of weird where uh, kind of a gothic setting is more appropriate until and unless the scene is kind of uh, this we will not create it will not create that kind of objective. So, the point what I am making and relating with the comics is simple that we need to know why the panel is in such a particular way. Why not panel is like this? So, as a researcher, as a student of comic studies, our job is to go deeper and deeper and dwell into the mind of a comic artist to understand that why this kind of panel is there. So, which is why what I am going to discuss with the help of William Asner's book Comic and Sequential Art that what are the panels? what kind of a panels are available. So, here on the uh, slide you see the first panel is called full figure panel right. So, here if you look at the slide 
in the slide you interestingly see full figure panel in full figure panel what i mean to say there are six panel let's say 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 i'll go slow so that you can understand easily now there are six panel and obviously what this space is called exactly this space is called gutter right all right so let's remove it now look at the panel 1 panel 2 panel 3 panel 4 panel 5 panel 6 closely what interesting thing or common thing you notice in all the panel first thing that that each character is present and there is nothing part of his body is missing which means full figure panel his entire body can be seen in the panel look at the girl right from top to bottom top to bottom here so full figure you see it's a full figure it's not like head is not there or leg is not there or hand is not there every panel six panel what you see that you see see in the fifth panel what i'm showing you see the full figure full figure presence you see interestingly right so what i'm pointing towards is simple that in each panel full figure is present and that is why it is called full figure you will understand when i will talk this uh, second kind of panel or third kind of panel why it is important to see full figure panel keep this full figure panel in your mind right keep this because i may come back to this full figure panel let me go to the second panel right so what is a full figure panel full figure panel is a panel that shows a character or object in its entirety which means from head to toe which means from head to toe so you see here head to toe right the entire character is present in its entirety so this is called full figure panel hold on let me go to the second panel and which is called medium sort panel right now you will easily understand what i was talking about in medium sort panel a panel that shows a character or object from the waist up so you see there are two characters so one two you see it's not full figure panel why is it not a full figure panel because as we have read william as now so comics and sequential art where he talks about that this is called medium sort panel in which a character is shown from the waist up you see it's a waist it's up that's it right it is the waist it's up so leg is not visible right the lower part of the body is not visible and that is a particular reason why it is a called medium sort panel i'm sure that now you understood what is a uh, full figure panel and was a what a medium sort panel let me show you the third panel here you see it's a called close up panel right it is a called close up panel why something called close up panel nothing let me make it more interesting for you when we uh, go before a camera right when we go before a camera and we are asking for a take a full picture right so there is a particular reason why we want our full figure or entire body top to bottom should be present in the camera but in other places what do you see there should be a background visible even if my body is not entirely visible we are perfectly fine or you want to show something specific part of your body let's say for example if you have wore a watch or let's say you have wear a bracelet or something good on your body so you want to show that specific portion of your body and then you ask cameraman to see a pic take a picture of it and you post on it so there is a specific reason why you ask someone to take a specific form of picture so there is objective in the same way when we are going to read a comics and suppose i want to show a kind of anger on someone's face right the person is angry how I, how i will show you right i will zoom the camera and show his face that look at his eyebrow look at his eyes and how his is making his face 
and if I zoom it up and the expression is quite visible and then you can immediately make it out that the person is angry, he is not happy, he is not laughing, right. Let me put it this way, another way, suppose the person is about to laugh out loud. So, what shall we do? We will also zoom and we will see that how entire body is shaking or suppose a, a kind of a joke was created and he is not able to control his laugh. So, we will show that how entire leg, entire hand and face is every part of his body is moving. So, it is a specific reason why do we create that kind of a panel. So, in the panel when you see something called close up panel. So, in a close up panel what you find that it is not entire body, not a full figure panel, it is not a full figure panel. So, no full figure uh, body will be present, not waist to, to top, but only specific portion of the body. So, look at the slides for a second, then you will understand ki how there are different form of the body or different part of the body has been shown in a close up to create a particular effect over you. So, let us go back and see here the first one close up panel. You see that first where is my friends and you see his face. You can easily make out that he is not laughing. You can easily understand there is something called a tension. Look at the second one. Well, mister what will it be? You see here also it is shown to create a specific effect. Then third one and because they are my friends I owe them life. You see only hand is shown and you see how his hand is being shown right and then you can see the other parts. So, so here you see these all are panel, this is also 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 panel. but this pan this kind of a panel is called close up panel right where as be understood that it shows a character or object in detail it focuses on the face or a specific body part right so moving to the next slide you will see that this slide is talking about the splash page which means a full page panel that is used to introduce a new scene or character or to create a dramatic effect. So, here you see this is a one, this is a two panel one and two and this two panel is called a splash page. What is the reason? Because a full page panel that is used to introduce a new scene or new character. So, sometime you see in the movies, let us say for example, that when you are watching a movie, what happens when a character is introduced? There is a way, I am not sure whether you recall the scene in Doom 3 when the Amir Khan appears, it is a splash page because when you see that he has looted the bank and the money is flying, everyone is running behind the dollar or money whatever the currency is called and then you see suddenly there is a focus on a Amir Khan who is stealing, who has stolen the bank, he has looted the bank and he is running from there and he is coming from the building. So, what it means? It, it, it is it is not a splash page, I am just showing you, I am just relating it, it to the comics so that you can easily understand the purpose of showing that kind of a scene, introducing a character. What kind of a character he is? Chivalrous, marvelous, heroic character, right? he has done something which is almost impossible for a common man and there you see on the slides as well. If you look at the slides please, in the slide you see here Spider Man is introduced who is coming from the top which means that now it is the right time they have introduced you a particular character. So, what is splash page does? It is a full page panel which means full page where you see a new scene or character, the purpose is, the objective is to create a dramatic effect. Now, we have a double page spread, right, which means that a two page panel that is used for a particularly important or dramatic moment in the story. So, the reason is that this kind of panel you see there is no gutter, right, there is a no gutter which means there is no space, right, generally what we were, sorry what we were generally expecting, we were generally expecting that there will be a gutter on the page, right, but there is no gutter 
it's a called double page spread which means a two page panel that is used for a particularly important or dramatic moment in the story so esner is discussing how the size shape and placement of panel can be used to create different effects and convey different emotions for example a series of small panels that can create a sense of a rapid action while a large panel can create a sense of stillness or contemplation asner conclude the section by stating that panel is the basic unit of a comics and that the size shape and placement of a panel can be used to create different effects and convey different emotions as the discussion of the gutter and its role in the readers imagination is particularly insightful as it highlights the unique aspects of the comic medium so what i was talking in this entire section is nothing but specifically how the size shape and the placement of a panel is deliberately done to create different effects and convey different emotions all right so uh, one thing also very important when we are reading comic or getting into comic arts is the concept of time and space so i'm not going to talk about the history of time and space and i'm sure that is a philosophically culturally theoretically very loaded term even kant has spoken about it uh, a lot of uh, philosopher have spoken left everywhere is talking about the space in the same way when we are reading comics what interestingly you also notice that time and space they are very important concept which are introduced which are talked differently which are uh, discussed differently by comic uh, artist so the reason for uh, talking about or arguing about the timing is also because the kind of a suspense they want to create the kind of effects that they want to create or what kind of a surprise they want to create so therefore in section 3 is also more about that what kind of a time difference he is talking about and how it relates with uh, suspense or let's say for example uh, uh, emotional uh, distance or emotional effects moreover it also talks about the kind of a closer that audience gives it depends on the kind of a panel is created so moving to the section 3 let me uh, ask you to read the slides slide number in the section 3 you see that asner argues that a uh, timing of the panel can be used to create suspense surprise and other emotional effect he discusses the concept of a closer which is the reader's ability to mentally fill in the gaps between panels closer is what allows comics to convey a sense of time and motion eisner also discusses the use of montage which is the juxtaposition of image to create a specific effect montage can be used to create a sense of time passing or to show the relation between different events or character asner provides examples from his own work to demonstrate how timing can be used to create different effects for example he shows how the use of a long pause between panels can create a sense of attention or anticipation asner concludes the section by stating that timing is a crucial aspect of comics and that it can be used to create a wide range of emotional effects so overall what we see interestingly in section 3 it provides a detailed discussion of a closer and montage highlighting the unique aspects of the comics medium and how they can be used to create effective storytelling so this is the section is more about timing and montage so what we see in the section 4 is devoted to use of lettering in comics right so asner argues that lettering is an important aspect of a comics as it can be used to convey different moods 
and emotions. So, what interestingly you see in comics is that lettering becomes very important. Why lettering becomes very important? Let me give you an example that will be easy. See, I am sure that you have used Microsoft Office page you use and you write. Let us say for example, when you write the name of the book, what you do? You put it in italics, right? Why do you put it in italics? Because you want to specify one that it is a book and also for the conditioning that given by the book that people can also relate that this is about the book. Let me give you another example. When you are writing something, right? So, let us say for example, you want to give someone a sad news, right? So, you do not do lot of kalakari or let us say lot of uh, uh, creativity in your page, right? You just drop a message and inform him or her that something bad has happened to me or to someone. But something when it is going good, let me give you an example that when you write a message to your friends and you want to wish him happy birthday, what you do? Right? After writing happy birthday, you use balloons, so you use cake, you use emo, emo, emoticons, so which expresses a kind of happiness. Right? But the same thing you do not do when you are expressing something sad has happened or something neutral has happened to you. So, the reason why I, why I am talking about it, it is also important when you are writing a comics is that what kind of a lettering, what format of a lettering you, you use. That particular format of lettering express what kind of emotion you want to talk about. right? So, I am sure that so far if you have read any comics or if you have come across any comics, you must have noticed that entire comics. right? Uh, I am not trying to generalize it, but at least as far as I have gone through and I am sure that exceptions are available, but every comics in every page you see that there is different form of a littering or used. It depends what is the purpose and objective of the comic artist is. So, that is the purpose of that what form of littering we use. So, look at the slides where he is talking about littering. So, in the section 4, William Eisner is arguing that lettering is an important aspect of a comic as it can be used to convey different moods and emotions. So, Eisner also discusses the importance of lettering placement and how it can be used to guide the reader's eye and create a sense of rhythm and full flow. So, let us say for example, what Eisner is providing like he is giving example from his own work to demonstrate how lettering can be used to create different effects. So, for example, using uh, uh, bold lettering, right? let us say here you see, you see this is a bold lettering, right? here you see this is this form of lettering is not the same the way it is, right? the way conflict is written with the question mark in the same way this is not written. right? So, what is why this is a bold lettering? So, you see the reason for Eisner is talking about uh, lettering is to create when he is using bold lettering to create a sense of urgency. He's, he tries to show how the use of different font sizes and styles can create a sense of emphasis or urgency. Eisner concludes the section by stating that lettering is an essential aspect of a comics and it can be used to enhance the storytelling and emotional impact of a comic. So, I am sure that uh, let me give you more example to make you understand. Let us say for example, today in the morning when I was uh, writing a message to uh, my uh, head of the department, what I did for a specific information, I used the big font and I also did it in the bold size. Why? Because I wanted to bring the attention of the head of the department on this particular information. right? But rest of the information like kind regards, uh, I am sure that you are doing great, all this is in the normal font. But something when I am showing something and I am telling something, it is created in the bold and also the font size is not going to be the same. So, Asner is doing or trying to convey the same idea in the comics 
that why do we use lettering in a different way and why something is bold and why are the reason that sizes or the font of the words or letterings are different. So, this is a particular reason. So, therefore, if you see the slide, you will interestingly notice that uh, in uh, this slide, he is trying to convey that it is a different types of lettering and their effects and Eisner is talking about that how different types of lettering and its effect and he shows with the examples. So, it, it also shows the importance of this aspect of the medium that when we are using comic medium, we have to put emphasis on different types of lettering. So, when we go to section 5 of uh, comics and sequential art by Will Eisner, it is focused on the layout of the page in comics, right. Layout of the page in comics, Eisner argues that layout of the page is an important aspect of a comics as it can be used to create different effects and convey different emotions. He discusses the different ways that panels can be arranged on the page to create different effects. For example, a series of small panels can create a sense of rapid action, while a large panel can create a sense of stillness or contemplation. Eisner also discusses the importance of the gutter, which is the space between the panels. So, further in his chapter, he is talking about it. So, before I move to the next explanation, what is he is talking about that is giving examples from his own work to demonstrate how the layout of the page can be used to create different effects. For example, he shows how the use of overlapping panels can create a sense of depth and perspective. So, Esner also concludes this section by stating that that layout of the page is a, as an essential aspect of a comics and it can be used to enhance the storytelling and emotional impact of a comic. So, before I move further, what I wanted to explain to you that you can see on your slides something called pure grid or vertical staggering or let us say bleed, whole row, inset, blockage, separation, overlap and horizontal uh, staggering. What is this all right? Why I have been introducing? See, uh, these are the technical things, but we must know as a researcher, as a student of comic studies. So, when we see pure grid, right, this is a pure grid, right, this is a pure grid. First thing we will talk about the pure grid. You see, there is a regular distance between each panel, right. So, you see this panel, this panel, this panel, this panel, they all are of the same size, right. And you see that there is a regular distance, which means that the distance between these two panel, the distance between these two panels are not very different, they are almost same. So, this kind of a panel is called pure grid, right. So, when we see in the row, right, in the row, not in the column, not this side, but this side, when there is a regular distance between each panel, this is called pure uh, grid. So, what we see is also called vertical staggering, right. So, here what happens, there is a panel division in column, right. So, panel division, so this is a vertical staggering, you see panel division in column. So, there is a division of the panel in the column that you see and what is a bleeding basically when we I am sure that you are familiar with this term what I mean to say that you look at this, this is a grid all right, this is a grid under which you see all the panel are created. But interestingly you see that there is a some panel which are exceeding which is uh, going out of the page right, you see this this is going out of the page. So, when this goes out of the page, this is called bleeding out, right. So, it goes out of the page. So, 
this is the one called bleeding when a panel goes out of the page. So, this is called bleeding. Next is what we have uh, 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 this is called a whole row which means that left to right right when you see left to right is the same column and inset is the name itself is quite clear inset simply suggest that panel within the panel right so this is a panel this is a one panel right let's say for example this is a panel one panel two just a second i'll uh, explain you more clearly so let's say for example this is a panel two this is a panel one so what do you say panel 2 is within the panel 1, right. So, this is called inset, this is nothing else, but it is called inset, right. So, moving out what we say it is called blockage, right, here you see, right, here you see this is called a blockage, blockage when you see that there is no gutter space, right. Let me take you to look at just pure grid and then look at the blockage. What do you see? You see here there is a gutter space available in the pure grid, but in the blockage there is a no gutter space. So, which means this is this kind of a panel is called blockage, right. Now, moving to the next is overlap, right, entirely opposite to the inset. You see this is a overlap as a slide explicitly talks about when one panel like you see this panel right this panel and then there is a another panel let me oh sorry let me put it this way let us say for example this panel is called second panel this is called one panel so what will you say that panel number one and panel number two overlap right so this kind of a panel is called overlapping so panel over panel uh, is called overlapping and what is the reason for creating a overlap is the reason is when you want to show just a minute I am sure that you can read it successive action right. When you want to show successive action and there is a no time gap right. When there is a no time gap and you want to show successive action because successive action can only take place without taking time gap. So, for creating this kind of effect what we do we create overlap panel right. So, sometime what happens is that there is a two different narratives right then when there is a two narratives then here you see there is separation. I mean separation does not mean that there is no gutter, this space is called a gutter, but you see that this gutter, this gutter, this gutter and this gutter are not the same. So, what does the mean by this gutter? This gutter simply shows that there are two narratives, right. To show the two narratives running parallel, we have to show or we have to take the help of a uh, separation. So, that is why there is a more space in the uh, gutter. All right. So, here you see that in section 5 he is providing examples from his own work to demonstrate how the layout of the piece can be used to create different effects. Uh, for example, as I was talking about he is showing how the use of overlapping panel can create a sense of depth and perspective Esner concludes the section by stating that the layout of the page is an essential aspect of a comics and that it can be used to enhance the storytelling and emotional impact of a comic. So, overall what we see in section 5 it is providing a detailed analysis of layout of the page in comics and Eisner's discussion of the different ways that panel can be arranged as well as his use of examples highlights the importance of this aspect of the medium. So, what I was talking and referring to that when we are talking the section 5 he is 
talking about different kind of a panel let us say for example, he talked about pure grid, he talked about staggering, he talked about inset, he talked about overlapping, he talked about bleeding. So, you see that these form of a panel, these different types of a panel are deliberately created. So, we are not going to understand that is a by mistake or this is not a good comics or this is a bad comics. No, the reason why these kind of a comics are available to us is a particular reason the objective is that there is a sense of urgency or something else uh, the comic artist wants to convey to us and that is the reason why there is a overlapping as I was talking about and there is a separation right when two stories are running parallelly then we have to use the separation otherwise it would not be able to convey our sense. So, let us uh, move to section 6 and see what Asner is offering us in section 6 in his book called comics and sequential art. So, let me see you the slide next slide in uh, section 6 what you see that Eisner is focused on the use of color in comics. Eisner argues that color is an important aspect of a comics as it can be used to create different moods and emotions. He discusses the different types of coloring techniques including hand coloring, computer coloring and how they can be used to create different effects. Eisner also discusses the importance of color placement and how it can be used to guide the reader's eye and create a sense of rhythm and flow. He provides example from his own work to demonstrate how color can be used to create different effects. For example, he shows how the use of warm colors, right? How the use of just a second, how the use of warm colors, right? Warm colors can create a sense of intimacy. This is what I have been talking about that what kind of a color be used to refer to what, right? Or let us say for example, warm color is also used to create a sense of a passion or let us say love, right? So, these are the reason why they use warm color and why do we need to use or have a very different idea of color. So, Asner concludes the section by stating that color is an essential aspect of a comics and that it can be used to enhance the storytelling and emotional impact of a comic. So, overall what we see interestingly in section 6 is a detailed discussion of the different types of a coloring techniques and their effects as well as his use of examples which highlights the importance of his aspects of a medium. Right? So, this chapter is more talking about that when we are writing or when we are reading a comics or writing a comics how we can make use of a color. Moving to the last section that is uh, section 7 that is uh, focused on the use of storytelling techniques. Right? So, in comics Eisner argues that comics are a unique form of visual storytelling and that they require a different set of techniques and other forms of story telling. He discusses the different techniques that can be used to convey emotion and meaning in comics including facial expression, body language and visual metaphors. Eisner also discusses the importance of pacing in comics and how it can be used to create different effects and convey different emotions. He provide examples from his own work to demonstrate how visual storytelling techniques can be used to create different effects. For example, he shows how the use of visual metaphors can create a sense of depth and meaning. So, having uh, discussed Eisner, what also I wanted to add that when we are going to see any visual storytelling which is a very essential aspect of a comics and reason is that what kind of emotional impact that comic is creating. Therefore, 
it is also high time that we should put more emphasis on uh, our uh, romantic scenes, how it is created. Let us say for example, imagine for a second when you have to, let me put like also my job is to lift your visual imagination when I am teaching you. Let us say for example, that you have to show an accident, right. So, what kind of a color will you use? Let us say for example, you are going to show an emotional scene between a father and a daughter, right. So, what color will you use? And let us say for example, you want to show a murder scene, right. So, interestingly you see that I picked up three different situations and in all these three different situations, you will interestingly see that the color becomes will play a very important role. Let me give you a more example. I am sure that you have watched uh, movies. So, what happens when there is a romantic scene? So, look at the like if you focus on the sound, it is a very different melodious uh, kind of a sound is created on the background. So, it gives an effect what kind of a scene is going to take place until and unless that sounds is not played, it would not be able to convey the same sense. Let me ask you second thing, I am sure that when you see there is a ghost appearance on uh, cinema, right? the scene of a ghost appearance, how do you realize that something horror is going to happen? You realize it on the basis of a kind of a sound, sound helps to create a kind of a suspense and thriller in our mood and in our imagination. So, and when we see the scene, we immediately realize it is not only about the character is playing a role. Mind it my dear students and friends, it is not only camera, it is also about the sound given to that. In the same way, my purpose is not to talk about films or other things, the purpose is to relate it that why is a visual narrative, right. It is also telling a story, but also showing you pictures. So, therefore, color becomes very important. And next, what Eisner is talking about that how we can talk about different form of storytelling. So, here I will end this lecture because William Eisner is very loaded and I am sure that without William Eisner it will not be complete, but after talking about William Eisner, understand the second lecture or let us say sorry, the next lecture is called uh, Understanding Comics, which is by MacLeod and you will see how he has contributed in the field of a comics. Without his contribution, we would have not moved much ahead in comic studies. Therefore, in the next lecture, I will more talk in details about different aspects of a comics and his contribution, which is extremely significant and important for all of us. So, see you in the next lecture. Take care. Bye-bye.